Today, Insta360 is out with its latest thumb-sized action camera, and this is the camera by itself right here. This is the Go 3. Taking some of the most critical feedback from the two previous generations, you can check out a review of the Go 2 up here in the corner. This new versatile camera comes with what they're calling an action pod that turns it into a little bit more of a GoPro-like experience. It has a much longer runtime with extra battery life. It also has a flip-up touchscreen and some other features built in here. And of course, we got our hands on a unit, so let's dive in and check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys, and we are checking out the Insta360 GO 3, which is still just an unbelievably small little action camera. If you're completely new to the GO series from Insta360, I mean, it's meant to be a very simple, very easy to use, and very versatile little action camera. They have a lot of different magnetic mounts, one of which being the lanyard that I'm wearing right now. You can just clip it on right there, and then immediately you get a really interesting perspective with hands-free functionality. It also comes with some other mounting accessories, has this handy little, uh, they call it their easy clip, which is meant to work like on the brim of a hat, which also gives you another interesting angle. Um, so you can mount it right there and get that perspective without wearing, you know, like a head strap or a helmet or anything like that. Because it's so small and lightweight, you can just clip it onto a hat. And additionally, with the Go 3 comes one of the newest features and what really is pretty powerful and really impressive, and that is this action pod, which when looking at it, you know, it looks about the same size and the same kind of layout as what a GoPro would, but you just clip the camera inside of here, and then you have a little bit more functionality because when you turn it on and you flip up the touchscreen here in the back, you can see you actually get a preview of what you're seeing. So um, with previous models of the Go, you had to connect it to your phone to be able to preview the footage, which you still can do. But having something actually built in here, where if you're vlogging, you can just connect this and you know hold the camera out and get an idea of what it's shooting, makes this pretty powerful for those types of content creation. But it still has the very small, very compact form factor of the camera itself, which really lets you get some very interesting angles. So first off, let's take a look at the design of the Go 3. It looks very similar to the Go 2. You can see on the front, right here we have one of the microphones. I believe the other microphone is up top here. There's a small little LED light, and then there is a single multi-purpose, multi-function button on here. So holding that down will turn on the camera. Those three little beeps let you know that it's on. You can start recording by pushing the button. And you'll start recording and the light starts flashing red to let you know that you are recording. And then obviously to stop, you can push it again. It'll make some noises letting you know that it's stopped. And then you can hold the power button to turn it off again. And then on the back, you see we have a little uh, connection point up here and that's where it actually connects with the action pod. And then it also has two little clips on the top and bottom. And that's where you can connect it to some different accessories like this little reusable sticky mount, which I believe was on the go to as well. And you can you know, pivot that and position it however you want turn it to get it uh, in different orientations as well. For storage, the Go 3 is using internal storage and it comes in a few different size variations. The 32 gigabyte is starting at $380. The 64 gigabyte, which is what we have, starts at $400 and it goes up to 128 gigabytes of internal storage for $430. And those packages still include all these different accessories, but obviously just change the maximum record time of the camera itself. And recording times on the 64 version that we have equate to two hours and 53 minutes of footage in the 2.7K 30 FPS video mode, or one hour and 37 minutes in the 1440p free frame mode, which basically is like a single side of a 360 camera. So it's just recording kind of everything in front of you, looks very fish-eyed, and then you use an app to kind of process that footage afterwards. You can either use the mobile app, you can use your phone, or you can download the footage to your computer and use the Insta360 Studio app. And now let's take a close look at the action pod. As we said, you can just snap it in here. It snaps in very easy. It's very secure. On the left side here, there is a release button to actually pull the camera out. So you push that in and then you can pull the camera out. Otherwise, it's locked in there pretty tight. Also on the left side, we have a USB-C port for charging or downloading the footage if you connect it to your computer. Up top, we have a shutter button, which will start and stop recording modes. On the right side, we have a power button, and then also a cue or a function button. And as far as I can tell, that just swaps between different 
shooting modes. So you can go between photo, video, free frame, all those different modes. And Insta360 also has like time lapse and hyper lapse and some other more specialized modes as well. So some cool functionality built in there. And then on back, we do have the touchscreen, which like we already showed is also a flip up touchscreen. And it has quite a bit of resistance, which is really nice. It feels very sturdy when you are using the flip screen. It doesn't feel like it's gonna flip around or flop around or close on you or anything like that. It feels very secure. So this flip up screen is definitely one of the biggest updates and features of the Go 3. Um, so you can you know, set up a shot very seamlessly just by looking at the screen and get everything all set up. You don't have to open up your app and look at the footage through there. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. And another benefit of the Action Pod is a lot more battery life in this camera. The camera itself does have improved battery life over the previous generation. You can record up to 45 minutes of battery life. Uh, that was up over 30 minutes, I think, of the Go 2. But when you snap it into the Action Pod, when everything's fully charged, you get up to 170 minutes. So just shy of three hours of battery life, which is really, really convenient. The Go 3 can film in a few different resolutions. Uh, in the video mode, just the plain video mode, and record up to 2.7K. So the full resolution of that is 2720 by 1530. And in the freeform mode, which is a little bit wider, which can basically opens you up to making some adjustments, mainly to the horizon in post-processing, the max resolution there goes down a little bit to 2560 by 1440. But that is an enhancement over the previous generation and and really, you know, the main focus of this is for quick clips, for mobile sharing. So high resolution probably isn't gonna be the main focus of this camera. But in my experience, both of these resolutions and shooting modes do look pretty good. I blew them up on my computer here to do some editing and I was pretty impressed. I thought that it definitely was right in line with what a lot of the GoPros that I've used, what kind of footage that looks like. And so here, let's dive into the app and we'll take a look at what the camera can do inside of the app. You know, Insta360, uh, we've checked it out with some other cameras. They really do have a lot of powerful tools built into their app. So we're gonna take a look here. I've recorded a little bit of footage. We'll see what we can do kind of in the post-processing mode here and you know what sort of different functions we have built into it. So in here, you can get a preview of what the camera is filming right now. There's a little bit of a delay. It's not that much, but there is a little bit. Uh, and you can, you know, change all the different modes here. If you want to put it in auto or put it in manual, I'll leave it in auto. You can also change what mode it's shooting in. We have free frame video, normal video. You can do photo, HDR photo, time lapse, time shift, slow motion, loop recording. So quite a few different options in here. I'm going to leave it on video. And you can also click and change all the settings in here for resolution. Uh, you can see in the video mode, we have it at the maximum resolution, 2.7K. You can change the frame rate between 24 and 30 FPS. And then we also have a ratio for 16.9 or 9.16 if you're shooting something for mobile and you want that vertical aspect ratio. You can also change the FOV a little bit, ultra wide, action view, linear. So that just kind of changes up what the FOV looks. And then like we saw with that linear mode, it tries to like a GoPro take out kind of that fisheye look and makes everything look kind of square and even like the desk here. When we flip it back to ultra wide, you can see it has a curve to it, which is usually something that happens with action cameras with a really wide field of view. And looking back, you know, through our album to see footage we've already recorded, uh, you can see you can scrub through everything there. You can trim, you can turn on and off color plus and actually turn it up and down, which is nice. Um, you can make adjustments to speed, face filter, other filters, uh, don't need any of that stuff, mirror, freeze frame, mark. So a lot of different options in here. If you wanna make some quick tweaks to the image itself, you can adjust color temperature, you can adjust contrast, um, and then when you're done with that, you can export the file uh, to your phone, basically to your albums. And so choose what you want to do here. You can uh, leave it on auto resolution, create your own custom resolutions here, and then you hit export. And then you can use that file in other apps. Moving over to the freeform video mode, you can see going up here in the corner, we have a little bit more control. We can turn on flow state stabilization or turn that off. And we'll see what that does to the image. You can see here it's uh, it's moving around a little bit more 
And then when we turn on the flow state stabilization, you'll see what that does to make everything very smooth. So I turned it on here, we'll rewind a little bit. And as you can see, it's silky smooth with that flow state stabilization and horizon lock. So some good control in here. And you know, in the 360 app itself, um, they have, you know, kind of auto AI editing modes. If you wanna to put together something like that, I think if you hit stories here, you can do flash cut. Basically you choose a uh, template or a theme as they call it, use your theme, and then you choose the clips that you want to actually import. And it has some of my old clips from when I was testing the Insta360 Flow. So you can bring things in there, it'll make an edit for you, and you can kind of check that out. Insta360 also talks about a little bit of an improved audio experience with the Go 3. They have two microphones now on this camera and they have a wind reduction sound mode when you are in the app and setting up the camera. And so it, Worked okay. Um, I when I was walking around outside, it's a pretty breezy day, and so here we'll play that clip so you can get an idea for what the audio sounds like. Here we are walking around outside, get a good idea of what the microphone sounds like built into here. It's a little bit windy today, so we'll see how the wind actually picks up on here. Um, Insta360 has talked about there being two microphones now, and there is a dedicated audio mode that's called wind reduction. So hopefully that does a decent job of kind of knocking out some of that but we'll just walk around a little bit. Um, I mean, with the flip up screen here, one of the use cases for this camera is vlogging. So we'll see how it performs. It's also just a little bit rainy today. Uh, so things might be getting a little bit wet, but with the IPX4 rating of the action pod, it should be okay. The camera itself is waterproof up to five meters or 15 feet. Um, so that should be good to go as well. But. Hopefully this is giving you a good idea of what the built-in microphone sounds like. I also have some audio clips from riding my bicycle, so we can get some good idea for what the audio sounds like there. And then in addition to that clip of just walking around, here's another clip of riding my electric bike. So you get an idea of what the sound is like from that with the wind noise. So it's decent. I mean, it still does pick up some wind noise. It's not terrible, um, but uh, I was still able to, you know, talk to the camera and it was coming through okay. And the, the camera was functioning fine for that. So as far as just using and editing the footage that you shoot on this thing, it's meant to be as simple as possible. So Insta360's focus here is definitely with the mobile app. It's easy to just sync them up, check out the footage, you know, do some edits on there and then quickly export it to your mobile device to use in some other programs or uh, what I did to get it on my computer. You can just plug in the USB-C port here and then you can access those files, make some edits to them and then export them. And you have a few different options for exporting them, one of the which being exporting in ProRes, which is what Insta360 recommends for the best quality. The video mode, video clips, can just be offloaded and used instantly in an app like Premiere. The freeform videos, those need to actually be processed and exported before you can use those in something like Premiere. And that's because it shoots much wider and you can make some adjustments to that horizon in post-production. So that's the really the only kind of trick there with actually using these things for a third-party editing app. So overall, the Insta360 GO 3 you know, once again, it's a very fun, very versatile, easy to use action camera. It's not as capable or powerful as something like the latest GoPro cameras. It doesn't have, you know, uh, interchangeable storage or replaceable batteries so you can like run all day. But what it does have works very well and it's very easy to use. Uh, the app is great, lots of great functionality in there. I never had any issues getting anything connected. Basically the app searches for the camera and pulls it up right away. It's very simple and easy to get up and running with that. And the added functionality of this action pod really does make this a lot more usable for me over the older version, the Go 2. Now, of course, all these updates and upgrades, those do come at a cost. The camera is now starting at $380, 
whereas the older ones started at 300. So a lot more cost built into that, but I think there is equally a lot more functionality built into it. And with the variety of accessories here, you know, there's a lot of different things you can mount it to and a lot of different ways you can shoot with this camera. Now, I know that going forward, this is gonna be the camera that I take on our family vacations. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to what my kids can capture and different memories I can capture of them. Well, that's gonna do it for our quick look at the Insta360 Go 3. If you wanna watch another video, I'll link to the Insta360 Flow, iPhone stabilizer, and our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.